I'm Mario Martinez Jr., CEO and founder of Ingresso, and we are the creators of FlyMessage.io, the free personal writing assistant and text expander application. On each episode of this podcast, you will hear from sales leaders, practitioners, and influencers to help you grow your sales numbers at scale. So get your pen and paper or iPad and keyboard and start taking notes as you're now listening to The Moderate Selling Podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Modern Selling Podcast. And in today's episode, I'm going to have the opportunity to share with you our story on how we went through an evolution from a sales training company into a SaaS technology company. And I'm going to take you through this journey by having you listen to this podcast that I was on, on the Evolution Podcast right here on the Modern Selling Podcast. That's right. You're listening to me talking to somebody else on their podcast, now on my podcast. Take a listen and enjoy the show. I just want to give you guys a heads up what we're going to talk today. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about SaaS, talking about how you can promote your SaaS. We're going to also be talking about a phenomenal product that's out there that if you're not using this right now in sales and in your business, you are going to want to go ahead and check it out. So today, special guest is Mario the CEO of Ingresso. So Mario, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, thank you, Emmanuel. I'm so excited to be here with all of you guys today. Um, as he said, I'm Mario Martinez Jr., CEO and founder of Ingresso. We are the creators of Fly Message, uh, which is a um, AI-based text expander and writing assistant. And I couldn't be more excited to be talking to all of you guys. I love it. So, so Fly MSG, so what was the, I guess, uh, the main reason why you went ahead and you know, started that company? It was actually a product that we designed originally um, under the Vingresso LLC umbrella. So Vingresso was formerly a sales training company that focused very specifically on sales prospecting for business owners and enterprise sellers. It could be an SDR, it could be a business owner, an entrepreneur, <clears throat> um, could be an account executive, national account manager, whatever it might be. And we designed uh, the Modern Sales Mastery Program that was specifically to help sellers learn how to leverage digital channels to engage with today's modern buyers. So LinkedIn, email messaging, video, uh, because there was plenty enough training out there on phone prospecting, and there was a ton of training out there related from the hello to close. So we really focused in on the pre-hello to the hello sales training. And during that process, we had designed a playbook, and that playbook was about 27 pages long and about 60 different types of sales moves. Now, what sellers would do is they would go into this playbook and they would uh, take our, our scripts and they would massage them uh, to match their tone, their flavor. As such, what we found was that business owners, sellers, everybody in between, they would copy and paste this documentation and they'd put it onto LinkedIn, they put it onto uh, uh, CRM, they put it into email. All right, that worked great, except one problem. They were spending anywhere between one to 15 minutes per message. Think about this. They had to go out and find it on a Google Doc, Word Doc, OneNote, Evernote, Notepad, Notebook, or worse yet, draft email. They had a playbook from us. They had a playbook from their manager. They had a playbook from their enablement team. And now they're looking for the content and spending all this administrative time. So what we did was is we said, well, we can come up with a text expansion product that would allow us to take all of our messages, put them into the cloud. And with a few short keystrokes, I can build out my entire message ubiquitously, whether I'm on chat for Drift, whether I'm in HubSpot, whether I'm in Salesforce, whether I'm on LinkedIn, whether I'm in Outlook Online or Gmail or whatever the case might be. And so that's how we built Fly Message was to support our sales training program. Okay. That was the evolution of so, so, So let's talk about the text expander future for a little bit. All right, so just imagine you're talking to me and I know nothing about sales. I know nothing about the content. So what exactly is it expanded? Is it, you know, what exactly is it, is it put in more context to? Good question. So generally, uh, and uh, Loon just came out with a study that showed uh, 80 plus percent of the U.S. workforce uses um, messaging multiple times per month, mm -hmm. the same message multiple times per month. They also found that 60, I think it was 64 percent um, had used it multiple times per day. Mm -hmm. So think about it in this case, um, we're connecting with somebody. And I'm reaching out to connect and I have a base template. 
hey, first name, exclamation point. Uh, I noticed that um, uh, this recent post, insert link, um, had, and then you have a finish off a sentence, or you want to book a meeting with me. And instead of reaching out and saying, hey, Emmanuel, uh, typing this out, uh, hey, Emmanuel, let's uh, go ahead and schedule some time. I'm looking forward to talking. Uh, here are three dates and times that work for me. Insert date, insert date, insert date. Or if that doesn't work, here's my link uh, to schedule a meeting. Go out and find the link, copy it, paste it, put it in, reread, hit send. Now, that will take you an extra minute to two minutes to do all the administrative part. So it, imagine if you could take all of your templates, Oops. put them into a text expander, and you create a short code, a we call a fly cut. It's a shortcut. So instead of typing out that entire let's book a meeting message, I'm actually going to type out dash B-A-M for book a meeting. And when I type that out, the whole entire message builds out for me, no matter what the platform is, anywhere online. It could be on Google Doc. It could be on a Google Calendar. It could be on a Outlook email. It could be within Salesforce. It could be within, you put the, you put the, uh, the, the, app, the SaaS application inside there. So that's what we designed, and that's the benefit of a text expander is that it helps, on average, our community is saving over an hour per day in administrative time of having the text expander type for them and build out content. So that, that's interesting because what you what you say with the fly cut, which is basically it's kind of like the pieces of code where you just you know put a few curly braces and then you know you tap a few things. So basically. If I'm understanding you you know, correctly, right? So I'm, you know, I want to type a message, right? I want to send a message to, you know, for a podcast guest, for instance. I go, you know, dash, you know, reminder, let's say dash RAI, and then it boom automatically pops pops around the message. Hey, it's an hour, you know, the whole the whole uh spank. Now, how does that work? Is that a um uh a, a Chrome extension? Is that a plugin? Is that how does it how does it have access to the data to know where I'm where I'm requesting information? Really great question. And by the way, podcasting is a phenomenal use case. Uh, I have the Modern Selling Podcast, which is a seven-year-long running oh, show. Gosh, gosh. And um, uh, for anyone who wants to, um, that I invite to join my podcast, I have a code, join my podcast, all one word, join my podcast, and the entire 450 words builds out exactly what they need to do, where they need to go, what the show is going to be about, what questions they need to submit. It's all built in. I also have one. For example, when someone has joined my show, as soon as we publish it, uh, my marketing team sends them out the social media posts, and I simply reply with dash five, the number five, star. And I ask him for a five-star rating, and it's a one sentence. So it takes me literally a second to be able to put that in and go. Now back to your question on how does it work. It's actually a Chrome extension, mm -hmm. and this week we just launched the plugin version of Fly Message, which is really cool. And you can go to flymessage.io, uh, whether it's M-E-S-S-A-G-E -S -S -E or M-S-G. So you called it Fly M-S-G, uh, and that's perfectly fine. But M-S-G stands for a short for message, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can go to flymessage.io, set up a free account. And uh, to right now on Edge, we currently have been in soft launch with the plugin version of the extension. And on Chrome, we have just uh, submitted yesterday, as a matter of fact, to um, have the plugin. So now what a user can do is they can not only remember their short codes that I just uh -huh. mentioned, dash B-A-M, dash five star as an example, but let's just say you can't remember it. Now we've embedded Fly Message directly into your workflow. So it's going to be embedded into Outlook. Uh -huh. It's going to be embedded into Gmail when you go to make a compose a message or reply to a message. Uh -huh. It's going to be embedded into LinkedIn and LinkedIn Sales Navigator as an icon in your messaging application. Mm. And all you have to do is click the little purple FM logo, up pops up all of your uh, messages, do a search, find it, select it, input it, and it automatically goes. So that's the plugin. Um, and what we're doing and building on top of that, so it's a phase one, phase two, phase three approach. Uh, phase two will come added functionality, things like first name tokens, uh, company names. We're reading this material off of a website or off of LinkedIn as an example, where you can auto insert information inside there with your messages. So that's phase two. Phase three, um, which we're currently developing right now, will be things, um, the AI writing component. Mm. So say you go to LinkedIn uh, or Twitter and you look at a tweet or a post and you want to reply to a comment. 
if you're a business owner, or you're a salesperson, you're usually out there prospecting anywhere between 40 to 100 prospects per day. Um, and so thinking of thoughtful, insightful responses to posts that you're targeting for customers can be very difficult. We're now going to put that in the hands using AI that will allow um, you to click one button and we'll read the post entirely for you and write a thoughtful, positive response or a curious reply. I love it. I was actually going to ask if you guys were doing anything, you know, with the new, um, you know, um, what you call it, um, generative AI, if you guys are going to be incorporating that in any way to, you Absolutely. know, because people are almost getting lazy now because it's like, why, why type up a message where you just like, you know, hey, I want to send a message to this person and it automatically written by AI. No, no, I love it. I love the SAS. Now, I want to talk about a few common problems that I, uh, a lot of SaaS, um, SaaS businesses, SaaS agencies, SaaS companies have, which is a customer education process, right? Because it's almost as though you, your customers have to be willing to learn and go through the learning curve, right? So what's that learning curve like for you guys? And what's, what are you guys doing as far as like to educate your customers so you can increase that retention? So onboarding is a really critical element, especially when you've got a product-led growth platform. Mm -hmm. So in PLG, product-led growth, it is all about self-service and self-teaching uh, teaching yourself mm -hmm. to be able to learn the platform and the product. And generally speaking, that product-led growth, you want to be focused on a four-minute or less onboarding experience um, so that I can understand how to use the platform very quickly, very easily, within four minutes. Uh, so uh, that's actually the the, the norm, uh, and oftentimes what you find one of the the big failures for product led growth platforms is that nobody knows and understands how to use it. So therefore, you have somebody that says, "I'm not interested," and I don't they don't actually use it. So in our platform, the moment that you sign up for uh, Fly Message on the free um, or paid version, uh, immediately the very first page goes through onboarding. We assess what you're interested in doing. Are you using this for business yeah. or are you using this for personal? We then understand what's your role because after that, we now customize an onboarding experience that takes you through a process that allows you to understand how to build a fly cut, mm -hmm. fill out the fly cut, the description and title of this particular item, and then the message. And then we actually create your first one using an auto signature, which is usually the easiest one and the most generic in general for everyone. Once you've done that, you click save and now you go <clears throat> through the process of going about and creating it on your own. So that process we've got um, nailed down. And what we saw uh, when we first launched it, uh, the onboarding, prior to the onboarding, because we were a sales training company, so we were training everybody on how to use the tool. Mm -hmm. And so we had about a 26% adoption rate. What do I mean by adoption? Somebody created an actual fly message, uh, they, and they um, actually deployed that fly message somewhere. Within... Uh, 30 days of launching a self-paced onboarding process, we went up to 57% within 30 days. Mm. So it was a dramatic jump, double, um, in terms of what we got and uh, what we had. And our focus, of course, is to get that closer to that 80th percentile. What we do on top of that is we also offer a free personalized onboarding session for any user that comes on. Now, eventually that'll go away because we'll have the masses that we can't uh, accommodate so many individuals, but we will do it for paid customers. So with that in mind, uh, if you're out there, you might as well get the free onboarding training. We have a relationship manager dedicated specifically for this on a customer success that takes you through how to use the application and how to think about the different use cases for your individual workflow. Um, and then uh, plug that into the application and that's on top of the personal onboarding through the platform. Interesting, interesting. There's, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot to unpack there, but one of the key things that, that interests me with founders and, uh, and entrepreneurs for the most part is the origin story, right? Like, what was that one pivotal moment in your life that said, you know what, I want to go out there be my own boss, run my own thing? What was that, you know, that slight switch that made you believe in yourself I actually go out there and work? Good question. So I started Vingresso LLC, um, seven, uh, well, six years ago, a little over six years ago, but one year prior to that, I was on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll take you back to 2015, October, 2015, LinkedIn asked me to speak at their annual users conference and, um, you know, brand equity, looked like a straight line going in, it is that in front of thousands of their customers and in a 45 minute solo session. And what I did was, is I was talking to sales leaders on how to go about implementing a digital sales training program, which included how to leverage LinkedIn and how to leverage video. Cause that's what we actually ended up doing. 
Um, and at that time, and still today, uh, I am the only person, as far as I know, most recently, when I asked LinkedIn, that has the world record, the only com enterprise company to ever have 100% um, uh, engagement by their sellers in utilizing LinkedIn, uh, and 100% of their reps attribute one sales opportunity to the pipeline. Yeah. Um, so they asked me to speak about this, and that's what I spoke about. Now, three months later, uh, the company I was with, uh, they were doing a downsizing. And so I decided I didn't want to be with a shrinking company because I had just came from one. And so I took a package on January um, 4th was my last and final day. And on January 4th, my son had asked me uh, to, that was 2016, my son who was then five years old, uh, he asked me if I would take him to school. Interestingly enough, this kind of became religion for him since he was in kindergarten. Yeah. He was a late bird. By that time, late bird start time was 10 a.m. and I was already in San Francisco for my job. So on January 4th, he asked me and I said, yes, I would. And it shocked him. He was like, well, how are you going to take me to school? Um, so anyways, so I wrote this whole entire article. Dad, you said LinkedIn would make you money. Mm. Within three weeks of that blog article, I was contacted by the head of America's marketing from Cisco and the head of worldwide sales operations from HP. Uh, and subsequently after that, ADP. Within three weeks, I had two signed contracts and I started my first company. So it was all by accident. Um, and they funded the first basically six months of, uh, of the company. Um, then I said to myself, you know, this is not big enough. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to look how to make this bigger. And so I went on a mission to look at how to create a roll-up organization where I can merge together multiple businesses to collectively form the largest digital sales prospecting training company. Uh. And uh, literally three, one year, three months after I started my first company, um, I formed Vingresso LLC, which was a seven-way company merger. Um, it was probably single-handedly the hardest thing I ever did in, in business, hardest thing I did in life, and I'll never do it again <laughs> that way. Um, with that in mind, uh, four of our original co-founders stayed on through um, the uh, four and a half years of uh, Vingresso. And then when we decided to pivot the business into a SaaS company, two of my founders who are very good friends of mine, still on our board uh, today on Vingresso Inc., uh, they exited the business to allow new talent to come in and for us to be able to pursue what we wanted to pursue. So with that in mind, um, it has been an awesome journey. It all started by accident with a blog article by um, written by me, but all about a conversation with my son. And then that turned into, I want something bigger. And I went out and pitched 14 people, closed seven of them, uh, and formed a company. We did really, really well. And our crescendo in our sales prospecting days was when Miller Hyman Group, which was the largest, most well-known sales training company in the world, a 40, uh, now a 45-year-old iconic brand, they asked, uh, they hired an outside sales training company to help train their sellers on sales prospecting. Good. And that was the first time in their company history they did that. And that was Vingresso. Uh, so I'm very proud of that. And it was at that moment in time that we said the next time uh, we go at this, uh, we've got to be able to build recurring revenue. And that's what Fly Message be able, uh, was, was able to bring to the forefront for us. And so we did another pivot. And that was Vivica Von Rosen, uh, arguably the most well-known social media influencer out there on LinkedIn and myself. And we have now... Um, converted the company from a sales prospecting training company to a SaaS company. And the best part, Emmanuel, yeah. is we took the 10,000 hours of sales content that we developed, we brought it over to Fly Message, and we now have a sales professional plan. What is it? It's for anybody that wants to learn how to go about creating messaging, whether it's an email message, a LinkedIn message, a LinkedIn connection request, or a video message, how to be able to create that messaging, the tool fly message to be able to deploy that messaging and then the training to help them learn how to use that engagement process to be able to create a, a fruitful conversation, a first conversation. And that's our supply message sales profile. So that's kind of the whole history of where we came from and where we're at today. No, it's interesting. So I'm, I'm very curious. So what exactly made LinkedIn, what piqued LinkedIn interest back in 2015 to actually invite you to speak, you know, cause obviously they don't invite, you know, what was that specific, uh, uh, subject matter expertise that they saw in your in your past experience was like, hey, let's get this guy. So we were one of their enterprise customers. Okay. Um, we had deployed LinkedIn Sales Navigator um, globally across the organization. And I was the executive sponsor of that program. And um, I was also the champion. It took me nine months to get that process approved. And so once I got that, pro that 
um, program approved, we deployed and, and we had really rapid success. And the reason for that was because in my corporate days, uh, the company I was working for was a software collaboration company, competitor to Zoom, as an okay. example. And there were 21 total competitors in the market. And um, uh, uh, 16 of the 21 were headquartered in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I had um, the uh, West region uh, for the organization. And so I was constantly challenged with how do I differentiate myself where my East Coast um, brethren didn't have that same type of challenge uh, with um, you know looking at uh, um, all of these different collaboration companies that were posted up everywhere on the freeways. So uh, that is why we decided to um, look at a prospecting program that focused in on another channel, not just cold call, not just email blasts, but actually engagement channel that allowed us to be able to utilize video as well as uh, LinkedIn to be able to engage with buyers. Interesting. You said some. So what exactly is that key ingredient that you teach people about, especially in the, you know, in the social media? Because I see LinkedIn is basically a business social media, right? So what is that key ingredient? Because, you know, a lot of a lot of businesses, especially on a B2B or enterprise sales, don't produce content, right? Because everyone still believes in doing things the old way. So what exactly is, is, those, is those unique things that you teach as far as the sales prospect? Great question. So um, just looking at LinkedIn alone, we have over uh, 16 hours worth of sales prospecting training content inside of um, our Fly Learning libra Library and as part of our Modern Sales Mastery Program. So Modern Sales Mastery is part of the Fly Learning. Fly Learning is a component within Fly Message. That's essentially how it okay. works. Um, and uh, using LinkedIn alone, uh, we have six different lessons that we take a um, someone responsible for revenue through. The first one is mindset. It, believe it or not, there are still people who are um, at the age of 45 and older, my age, that still are not sure if they should be able to engage or if they should engage uh, on a digital medium with their buyers. Mm. So we're going to take you through and help you understand, yes, you need to be here. And here's how you discover whether or not your personal buyers are there. Phase number two is we're going to take you through personal branding. Uh, most LinkedIn profiles read as a resume. Mm. Me, 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 president's club earner, uh, all-time best contract negotiator. Rather, if you're using it as a sales tool to garnish or attract buyer's attention, you need to be speaking to the buyer, mm. who you help, how you help, and what business problem you solve. You need to have multimedia that's there on your profile so that it engages with your buyer. And we're gonna take you through that content on how to go about it through step-by-step -step from the header of your LinkedIn profile all the way down into the publications and projects section. Yeah. The third step is now that we've taught you how to brand yourself, we're gonna teach you how to find and begin engagement with buyers. That engagement is not just liking a post. Engagement is actually being thoughtful in terms of how do I use this information? Uh, say they speak a foreign language or they've posted something. How do I use that information to be able to insightfully engage with that individual? And that's where our fly right uh, application of fly message will become so valuable to sellers in that you'll be able to not have to think so hard and allow the AI to be able to help you write a thoughtful, uh, curious, or positive reply uh, to a particular um, uh, post. So we're gonna teach you how to do that. Then we're gonna teach you once you've found them, once you engage with them, we're gonna teach you when is the right time to connect and how to connect. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna teach you through um, messaging, through actual real life scenarios. I have soliloquies inside there that we showcase. Once you teach you how to find, uh, how to connect, now we're gonna teach you how to lead with your solution or to your solution with value through content and that's your to your point a lot of companies uh, uh, don't have content maybe a lot of sm small business owners they don't have content so what do you do in those situations well you're going to use uh, uh, opc other people's content Ooh. right um, and that's how you're going to be able to uh, engage with that buyer you're going to use industry content or you're going to use your own blog white papers ebooks case studies videos youtube as an example you name it you're going to use that content. So that's super important. And you're going to use that content to engage in your feed so that um, uh, any one of your, let's just say, thousand connections, when they're on LinkedIn, your content now shows up in front of them. Mm. And we're going to teach you how to, how to do that and how to make sure that your content is seen in the various different groups that you want to have it seen at. And then finally, we take you through the uh, cadence. 
What do you do daily, weekly, and monthly to be able to engage with your buyers and sustain success month over month, a year over year? And we take you through that process. Now, that's just our LinkedIn training program. There's an entire video sales training. There's a virtual selling component. There's a negotiation component. There's all kinds of really great stuff inside of our training program. Uh, things like social triggers. What happens, Emmanuel, when you and I are connected and you have a work anniversary? Am I going to be one of the guys or gals that just clicks the message that says, say congrats, and now another one of the congrats messages end up either on your social feed or on uh, your messaging? Or am I going to actually engage more thoughtfully and turn that congratulations into a call to action for a meeting? Uh. And those are the things that we'll te we, we will we teach sellers how to okay, do. Okay, now I'm very curious now. Okay, so uh, I, I am genuinely curious about how to turn a congratulations or happy birthday into a meeting. How would you go about that? Let's say it's my birthday or it's, it, you know, I just started a new position. How, what's that process? Good question. So um, all throughout the training program, we have various different techniques of how you would do something like that. First, that you have to recognize is you cannot be the same as everybody else. So let's just say it's your birthday. Let's just say it's your work anniversary. Me saying happy work anniversary, just like everybody else, is it a ping? Yes, check the box. Will my prospect or buyer see that? Maybe, maybe they might. Or would I engage with a thoughtful reply that actually might lend to an engaged conversation? So I might say something like this, Emmanuel. I might look at your LinkedIn profile and I might look at all the latest content, or I might look at my content and see some sort of ebook, white paper, or um, a webinar. So let's just say you're a VP of sales and your work anniversary is popping yeah. up. Fantastic. I might say, hey, Emmanuel, congratulations on your fifth year personalizing it so I can recognize that I've looked at your profile and I've calculated what that looks like. Your fifth year at company ABC. And as a result, clearly you've had success. Now, one of the things that most of my peers that are VPs of sales want more of is how to be able to create more great sales conversations and how to grow that sales pipeline yeah. to ensure continued success. Directly below is a fantastic blog article on how your sellers can reach a 69% response rate to, yes, I will meet with you. I'd like for you to take a look at it and then I'll follow up and see if you have any questions or to schedule a meeting and talk about that. Then you attach the link, and inside that congratulations message, now on the recipient's end, what do they see? Not only do they see my insightful, thoughtful message, but now they see a big, beautiful thumbnail of the image with the link to that URL that stands out from the crowd because everybody else is, congrats, 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 right? Ooh. Where I'm going to actually change that up that makes it look like a thoughtful message, and it takes up not just one line on the screen, but actually takes up uh, uh, two thirds of the messaging screen. Mm. That's going to help you stand out. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Well, you you heard it from the man himself. So you, next time you see someone that has a, uh, uh, you know, just had a new position, make sure to pretty much take advantage of the opportunity and basically um, congratulate them. But obviously, try to see if you can book a meeting as well. Because then again, it's uh, there's the the movie Always Be Closing, ABC. So, uh, That's right. so, okay. So walk me through the sales process in this instance, because you did sales training, right? You did, you did, you did, you know, and you mentioned something, a very key word, which is monthly recurring revenue, right? And I'm assuming when you did sales training, it was more or less a one-off deal. Hey, we'll take this much up front and after we're done with the training, that's it. Versus the SaaS model was more, Hey, you pay us on a monthly basis for a lower fee. We have a residual income. Was that more or less the mindset or was it? Yeah, exactly. In our sales training uh, world, um, we built it up to over a million dollar year business and about 50% of our revenues at that best would be recurring revenue. The other 50% was nobody wanted to sign up for anything beyond a one year long term, right? So it was one and done. And that was because in that world, in a service-based business, you're constantly finding your next opportunity, your next opportunity. Mm. Whereas in a SaaS model, you have the light, the gift that keeps on giving, theoretically, and that is recurring revenue. So the idea is that that recurring revenue um, would allow you to be able to um, uh, continue to grow and have sustained revenue without you having to do anything other than product development. So that was the model. How we got there, actually, was in December of 2021, 
I woke up and I had an alert that a company by the name of PillPack had onboarded all their online digital pharmacists to Fly Message. Now, back at that time, Fly Message was ultimately designed as a sales productivity tool. Ooh. And so when I saw that pharmacists had joined the application, I thought, what are pharmacists doing on a sales productivity tool? Well, it turns out that because we had opened up the application to the public, we had never actually um, charged for anything. We just embedded it directly into our sales training program as a, as a line item. Turns out that uh, Tom, salesperson number one, told Mary in accounts payable, who told Billy, her brother, who was a doctor, who told Robert, who was a, uh, a professor, uh, who told Jill, who was a real estate broker. And so it was word of mouth marketing. And we had only onboarded a few hundred uh, users to the platform through our sales training program. At that time, we had 2,000 users on the platform. Ugh. And so it all grew as a result of word of mouth marketing. So um, what we did was is we said, well, wait a minute. Uh, if we look at the users, are most of these users salespeople? And it turned out that only 35% of the entire community that was on Fly Message were sellers. Ugh. It was the 65% that caught my attention that said, wait a minute, there's an entire horizontal that we are not focusing on. Can we monetize that horizontal? So we put a plan in place, a 12 month long plan, which took us 13 months to complete, uh, to, um, uh, to pivot from a exclusive sales training company into a SaaS company. And we completed that um, in March of 2023, um, that, uh, that, that translation plan. It was tough. It was rough. We had a, a thriving uh, sales training business. We had uh, many people that we had to say goodbye mm. to um, because we transitioned over into a different model and a different, totally different cost structure, totally different service delivery model. And so um, many folks that was sad to have to let go um, as we transitioned, but um, we did, and it was the right thing for the business. And um, now what we're focused on is we've got our, um, our plans that focus in on the 65% or 70% of most of our users on the horizontal. Mm -hmm. That's our starter plan. It literally costs you 27 bucks a year uh, and you can have um, uh, various different features or you can have the unlimited features for text expansion for 66 bucks a year, right? That's the growth plan. So that satisfies all your HR, your recruiter, your doctors, your lawyers, your real estate agents, all those folks. And then we have our sales plan, which is 132 bucks a year. And um, that essentially is like almost, it's like $10 and 50 cents, 11 bucks, yeah. so something like that. Uh, and so you get access to the entire tool, unlimited uh, training content, and then access to um, all of our updates and the new um, content and the, uh, the new um, uh, features that we'll be releasing yeah. as well. And so we have two lines of businesses, if you would, the entire horizontal and salespeople and customer, actually customer service um, is a, the second largest group. So. 50% of our users are salespeople and customer service reps. The other 50% are not customer service and sales reps. They're everybody else you could possibly think of. And so we really have plans aligned to both those two structures. Interesting. So, I mean, it's it's super inexpensive if you ask me. You charge it 20 bucks a year. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's super expensive. How does the, where does the profit margins come in? Well, in SaaS, the, the beauty of, <laughs> of SaaS uh, infrastructure is one server could scale up to 100,000 people, and that's less than 100 bucks a month, yeah. right? So, I mean, the entire uh, infrastructure, it's now gotten so stupid cheap. But the great thing is, is that there's some really amazing programs that are out there for uh, startup founders in the SaaS space through Microsoft, uh -huh. through Google Cloud, through Amazon Web Services. And so far, um, we've tapped into um, Google Cloud. We've got $150,000, um, um, what, what do we call it? Like Kind of like grant to be able to utilize their services. We've gotten uh, from Microsoft, uh, we're at their their third tier, 25,000. The next one is 150,000 if we hit the milestones. And then um, through Amazon, um, we've gotten up to $25,000 in credit. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, these large companies want to inspire innovation in through small from small businesses like ourselves and especially those that are minority based as well as female based owners so. and so there's a lot of help that's out there 
And it's not very costly to be able to do that. What is costly is the development process, okay. right? And so we went out there and I started um, a campaign to raise uh, our uh, pre-seed round. Um, so do uh, capital VC fundraising. And we have raised so far $650,000 oh. uh, in our pre-seed round. Um, we did about $250,000 uh, in um, crowdfunding uh, and or direct angel investment. And then another 400000 in institutional venture funding. Um, and we did that over the course of about nine months. Wow, interesting. And you know what's interesting is the last guest that I had on uh, High Accounts was that he's a pitch coach for two. He, he's an angel investor as well, and he works a lot with VCs. And and we kind of you know spoke a little bit about you know how many you know the percentage of businesses that actually get VC funded, which is like point zero zero five percent of businesses actually get the VC funding. So what was that? How were you able to get? Because uh, we also have a SaaS, we we in our side of things, which is kind of weird, is we have a um, we have a training uh, academy where we teach people how to basically start a SaaS SaaS company. But what's also very fascinating to me is the VC side of things. How do you actually? What was the pitch that you take to the VC investors and say, "Hey, listen, guys, I have this phenomenal product here. I think it's going to be a good fit for you, and this is your return over in the next five to ten years." What was that pitch like? So. I said um, earlier in the podcast that my seven-way company merger was uh, single-handedly then the hardest thing that I've ever done in mm -hmm. business. Um, I would argue now the hardest thing I've ever done in business is actually do VC fundraising. Um, in the market that we were, are, were in 2022 and still continues in 2023, uh, the pitching doesn't stop. Getting in front of investors doesn't stop. But the approval for money is insanely difficult mm -hmm. insanely difficult to get that the, to get the money that you're looking for so as an example to us to raise six hundred and fifty thousand dollars i did over 180 pitches wow now here's the good news of those 180 pitches 145 of them 46 49 of them 149 of them were crowdfunding investors mm -hmm. So I basically um, spent a lot of time with small uh, fish that gave 5,000, 1,000, 100 bucks, 50,000. I spent a lot of time perfecting my pitch there. So 145 times, and then I landed the one institutional investor. And of the institutional investors, I did another uh, 40 some odd pitches um, to those institutional investors to find one. Um, so it was very difficult, and it still continues to be difficult. Yeah. Um, what they're looking for is massive traction, massive growth, um, or someone's got to believe in your vision, and they believe in you that you can take it. Um, and that's where uh, is the harder part of the, of the process is if you've got the vision and you've got the, um, the, the um, charisma that will convince them, um, then someone's got to say, I'm going to place my bet on this horse and see it see it roll through so we're still actually raising we're going to do about a million dollars is our goal in the pre-seed mm -hmm. round um and so we're looking for another four hundred thousand. and so i just started um back into getting uh back into pitching yesterday as a matter of wow fact. wow man you've got your hands full let's uh but i mean so far i would say congratulations on obviously getting a 600 you know the, the north of 600 grand um because as, as we all know um getting other people to believe in the vision is a very interesting part of things and obviously believing the vision no hey you you know just be patient with me for another few years and then you're going to see a return on your investment so what is the what is the big vision for fly for fly message what is the big vision what is what is what is the one thing you try to build you try to replace amazon you try to be the next you know uh you know be chat gpt always what's that uh uh vision there Great question. So I'm a believer that the many different point solutions that are out there mm -hmm. are not sustainable. How so? That you can't build a business model around a point solution. What we need to be thinking about is a platform play. So think about Grammarly as an example. Grammarly has um, hordes and hordes of funding, and they built their entire model off of 30 million PLG users that are individuals getting help for writing and spelling and mm -hmm. writing check. Yeah. Then they launched a competitive platform to our fly message, which is a text expander. Totally sucks. Can't do can't do any multimedia. Can't do hyperlinks. 
It is like basic vanilla, but it was their first dip their toe in the water because <clears throat> they can't sustain the business just off of grammar check, mm. just off of spell check. Someone's going to come in and Google's going to make it a lot easier to be able to do it on Gmail and Outlook and et cetera, and Microsoft, know. right? So now they expanded out into text expansion. Then they released the AI writing component for just helping to write emails. Okay. If you look at some of these trends that some of the larger organizations are doing, they're recognizing that a point solution can't stand by itself. Oh. So while we can create great SaaS technology, we can create a killer app that does a very specific thing like grammar check or spell check. Yeah. It's not enough to sustain the business. You have to start putting out a multifaceted, a multimodal approach to your business. And that's where I believe um, Fly Message is going to make a very big differentiator. In today's environment, literally today, right now, we are a text expander. You can put in any message you want into Fly Message and deploy it anywhere online, ubiquitously across any SaaS platform that you're on. But where it needs to go is into the workflow of a knowledge worker, of which there's 1 billion knowledge workers. Uh. And that workflow is starts with helping you write the message to begin uh. with. And this is a message that is not just on email, which is Grammarly's focus. This is a message by which you would engage with a internal constituent or a buyer ubiquitously across any platform that they are at. Uh. Chat, email, uh, online chat, like a drift bot, Twitter, LinkedIn, CRM. And there are no applications today that are allowing you to do that ubiquitously. You got to have this application for that, this one for here, this one to work inside of this <clears throat> plugin. And that's where it starts with. Let me help you write your message first, even if it's just a happy work anniversary message. Uh. Or let me help you write your template that you can use over and over again. Now you take it to the next level. We've written the text. Well, we all know the name of the game today to engage a buyer is to bring in high value content and multimedia. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a video, like a loom piece, or whether that is a, uh, a graphic produced by AI, what if you could have the tool, Fly Message, create for you the actual multimedia, a visual voicemail, a graphic, that corresponds to the text. Now that's sexy. Now the next step is I need to store and organize this. Fantastic. You now can use Fly Message to store, categorize, and organize as you can today, any way you want into different categories, subfolders, folders, <clears throat> sorry, folders and subfolders and sub subfolders or categories, subcategories, and sub subcategories. Now you will use Fly Message to help you deploy those templates out. Good. That's the text expander part. Or you can use Fly Message to just write your message, and then you get to the very next part in the flywheel. And that is once you've deployed it, whether it's for a one-time one use or whether it's for a multi-time use using the text expander uh -huh. part, now Fly Message comes alive and says, before you hit send, your template says, hey, Emmanuel, exclamation point. We're going to bring in some personality insights into this particular message based upon the individual that you're speaking to. Oh. And the, the fly message will then tell you, hey, wait a minute. Before you hit send, Emmanuel is an old school type of guy. So the right way to do this is actually to say, hello, Emmanuel, come, oh. based upon his profile assessment uh, for all the multi-million points of data that we have on that person through um, social. And then finally, we now hit send and now the next question is, is how do I get that message to ensure that it's back into my CRM so that I can track it? That's what's called synchronization. And now we go to, I've synced it. How do I now continuously engage with that particular buyer or individual? Mm -hmm. And that might be helping you write LinkedIn messages. It might be helping you write Twitter uh, messages. It might be helping you write thought leadership posts. And that whole entire workflow that I just described is the vision of Fly Message as a platform and every one of those items that I just identified, sure, there's a provider for each one of those different elements. Ugh. But you'll never get scale as a platform, as a point solution, and you certainly won't build funding for that. Wow. So that's at least not in this day and age. And so that's what we're focused on is building Fly Message as a platform. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. I love it. I love it. Uh, that's 
that's that there's a lot to unpack there and, and you know um yeah, i know you have the podcast so what was the driving force behind the podcast because obviously you know you're doing what you're doing right now plus you're running a podcast what was that driving you know what was the the how would i call it the uh what was the inspiration behind uh, okay. So, uh, the inspiration was when I first started out back in 2016, um, I, I started talking to various different sales influencers, Jeb Blunt, Anthony Anarino, yep. Jill Conrath. And I started asking them, um, in me, in individual, we, we spent some time with me. They, they were so gracious and they said, yes, absolutely. And I said, how do you become a sales influencer? Yeah. Right. Uh, with, and so, um, every one of them said, write a book. You have to write okay. a book. Um, I have been able, uh, something about me when everybody, and something about me, anybody, t anytime someone says you need to go left to get, go right. I always say, how do I go right to go right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, I decided that I wasn't going to write a book because that is something I loathe. I loathe. I can, I do short blogs. I do thousands of blogs. Um, I can do short videos, uh, but I hate writing. Mm. Okay. So what I said was, is, is well, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to make my own way. And so I, uh, within about 12 months, uh, started hit, start hitting at nine. And then certainly at 12 months is when I um, got put into the category, um, is I started producing video content and I started creating a podcast that had thought leadership. Okay. And so the original source of the podcast and why I wanted to do that was to be able to avert having to write a book. Okay. Uh, so that was the first thing. But... It quickly moved into what I call ABP, account-based podcasting. So we have account-based marketing, okay. and we have account-based podcasting. And account-based podcasting is essentially, um, I'm going to create a podcast. I'm going to target VPs of sales, CROs, CSOs, and possibly CEOs, uh, and invite them to my podcast, and then turn around, build relationship, um, off of them giving me thought leadership, me promoting them, and then turn around and ask for a meeting to be able to help them. And we've closed millions of dollars off of this process alone. Account-based podcasting, it's an amazing asset. And I would encourage anyone out there who's thinking about how do I get into my target market's office? The best way is, is you reach out to them and say, I'd love to have you on my podcast. And I'd love to have you share your thought leadership you spend an hour with them, letting them talk all about their thought leadership, asking them questions, and then you go in for your key ask. Um, and that is a meeting to have a discussion. And sometimes they close, but sometimes they don't. But I'd rather develop a relationship and build trust um, with an individual than um, trying to go in cold and be like every other Tom, Dick, and Harry. So remember I said earlier in the, in the discussion, how do you stand out from yeah. the crowd on that congratulations on your work anniversary? Yeah. Okay, this is how you stand out from the crowd on that sales prospecting message. You turn it into invite them to talk about their thought leadership. Uh -huh. You build relationship with them. Show them that you know them. Be genuinely interested uh -huh. to become interesting. Uh -huh. Become interested to become interesting. And that's um, how we use the podcast to this. I day. love it. I love the whole concept of account-based po uh, podcasting. I never thought about it in, in that regards because, you know, um, I go to a lot of conferences and um, I realized one of the big ways I could get, you know, most of this, you know, the CEOs to come on podcasts to chat with me would be, hey, come on the podcast. But I never really talked about it on the on the back end side of things, but I love it. And I mean, as we wrap up here, any last words to the guests, where can people find you if they wanted to connect with you? On LinkedIn, for sure. Um, please make sure that uh, you reach out and send a personalized personalized connection request. Let me know you heard me on this podcast with Emmanuel, and then I'll know you're legit, uh, and that is an easy one. I only have a certain allotment of people that I can accept as connection okay. requests, so I actually don't, uh, most of them I, I decline. About 85% of all connection requests I decline, okay. especially those that are not personalized, but if you personalize it, you tell me you heard me here on the show, I'll be happy to do that, or you can go to flymsg.io, mm -hmm which will route you directly to Vendresso. Uh, and it's kind of like um, Meta and Facebook. Meta owns Facebook, Vendresso owns Fly Message, or Alphabet Soup and Google. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, the way the structure is. One day we'll, 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 we'll tur turn the whole name into Fly Message, but 
uh, that's uh, that's uh, when we've got more funding and we've got more marketing resources. I love it. All right, perfect, guys. The links are going to be in the description, so just go ahead and check them out and obviously go ahead and say, hey, you know what, show the Emmanuel's podcast and hey, you know, I want to go ahead and need to connect with you. I believe there's a lot of lot to learn, especially, you know, with the way you approach the sales as well. It was great having you on and uh, all right, guys, uh, enjoy. Thanks for listening to the Modern Selling Podcast. Please do me a huge favor and give the Modern Selling Podcast a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Oh, and don't forget, if you'd like to save 20 hours or more in a month and increase your productivity, go right now and download Fly Message. That's flymsg.io for free. It's your free text expander and personal writing assistant. Hey, thanks for listening in. And until the next episode, good selling.